Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, as we are celebrating the feast of the Holy, Most Holy Trinity. So I'm going to explain to you what this Most Holy Trinity is. And at the end of this homily, if you did not understand anything, then this homily is successful. Because that is what exactly this Holy Trinity is. It's a mystery. So why it is a mystery? As I've told you in the beginning of this Holy Mass. So if it is not a mystery, there is no divinity. Where there is mystery, there is a divine aspect, which is something beyond our control. You know why the whole humanity is struggling now because of COVID? Because this COVID and its nature, character, everything is seems to be a mystery. But we are able to understand this mystery to a very good extent. And that's why it is getting under control. Sooner or later, we will have every detail of this COVID-19 and then... No one will be afraid of COVID and COVID will be under our custody, under our control. If you know everything about God, then God is under your control. But if you don't know anything about God, then God is controlling you. God, you are under the control of God. Many human beings, everyone is trying to understand every detail of God. That is the biggest failure of human being. The agnostics, they say only what I can experience and understand, logical, I will believe. Rest is what I can't reason out, is rejected. That itself is a, is a clear sign that they are not using their common sense. Because if you really use the common sense, we know that there are so many things which we are cannot explain. Just for example, this COVID-19, when it started, nobody could explain it. And therefore, we are all frightened. And even some people said, there is no COVID, it's only some creation of some governments. There, is no, there are so many conspiracy theories going on. This is some uh, international conspiracy, there is no COVID, there is no virus, this is all hype uh, that is created. Because they are not able to grasp it, therefore they said there is, it doesn't exist. This is exactly what people are doing about God. They are not able to grasp God, therefore they said God doesn't exist. They will continue saying this unless they have an experience. The same way the people will continue saying COVID doesn't exist until they get infected. So this is how the world is. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to understand there is a mystery aspect for God. We can understand everything about a dog, how he is created, how it a dog is born, how long, how many months, and how, which are the food that we should give, how to train, every detail of a, a dog. But dog cannot comprehend who we are, the human beings, because they are lesser in gradation of life. Dogs and animals are lesser than human beings. The same way, we cannot comprehend God completely, because we are lesser in front of God. Therefore, we need to understand and accept with our common sense, God, you are a mystery. When you believe that God is a mystery, that is when you believe in God. If you think, oh, now I understand everything about God, then you are only having a pet dog. Uh, uh, the, just like we have pet dogs, we also consider God as a pet. That's why only when we are in need of some healing and miracle, we call God, God, come and heal. And then afterwards, we chase him out because we think we know about God. So remember, when we understand the Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity is a mystery. If you read the Bible, even from the Old Testament, from the beginning until the end, we can see the Holy Trinity is revealed in a subtle way, in a shadow way. For example, when God created the whole universe, in the beginning when God created God is there and we know the breath of God, the spirit of God is hovering over the world, that is spirit. And then God spoke the word, the word created it. So the word of God, the spirit of God and God himself. So the Holy Trinity is mentioned in the first chapter of Genesis. And if you look into the Bible, so many places we can see the Trinity aspect, Trinity, Trinity aspect. Every time when God comes down, there is three things. You can see cloud or fire. 
cloud and fire is a symbol of the holy spirit and the word of god that is symbol of jesus himself and this is not symbol of jesus he himself so jesus himself and uh, for example we we read in the catechism of the catholic church well, before we speak about the catechism of the catholic church let me ask you one thing i remember sometime back one person asked me one question father what is the biggest secret of the christianity which we regularly remember so every day we remember this secret and but we don't even remember we don't even know that we are remembering this secret that itself is a secret and this is a question he asked me so uh, i asked i was i could not answer him then he said father what please think again what do you do normally in your christian faith most often and pray which is that prayer that you mostly use then after some time i got one clue and i gave the answer i said most of the time most of the most of the uh, the mostly we use this prayer that is in the in the sign of the cross then he said we all make the sign of the cross but we remember we forget one fact every time when we make the sign of the cross we remember jesus we remember the crucifix we remember the cru- uh, death of jesus but more than that we are also remembering the holy trinity so every si- every time when we make the sign of the cross we are not only remembering the crucifixion but we are also remembering and proclaiming the holy trinity even in the sign of the cross the holy trinity is a mystery and we don't even even realize it many times so then i found this is something very interesting because every time when i make the sign of the cross i remember jesus i remember the crucifixion i remember what we gained through mount calvary but it also reminded me to remember the holy trinity each time when we make the sign of the cross and we read like this in the catechism of the catholic church 200 and paragraph number 234 the catechism of the catholic church says the mystery of the most holy trinity is the central mystery of christian faith and life it is the mystery of god in himself so the central mystery of the whole christian faith is holy trinity as long as holy trinity is not understood the christian faith is meaningful so this is the mystery this is the most important thing therefore there is a divinity in christian faith because this is a holy mystery it is the mystery of god in himself we we'll continue reading it is therefore the source of all the other mysteries of faith and the light that enlightens them so holy trinity is the source of all the other mysteries it is the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of the truths of faith the highest teaching the most fundamental teaching of the christian life is holy trinity and that is mystery praise the lord so therefore my dear brothers and sisters if you don't understand what i'm preaching now then you, that means you are clearly understanding it so because it's a mystery praise the lord So if you read in the Bible you can see so many ways the mystery of holy trinity is revealed as i told you in the genesis creation time the three e are mentioned and then again many times exodus 34 we see the god is coming in the cloud and speaking to them the trinity is mentioned there and then if you come into the new testament there are so many theophanies in the old testament that where all you can see the trinity one of those which we will take it and examine it today and if you come into the new testament during the baptism time you can see the trinity when jesus was baptized son of god is in the water and then the holy spirit came like a dove and then heavenly father announced this is my son so the holy trinity is revealed in baptism time and remember one thing if you read the whole bible again in the transfiguration time again the same thing jesus is there the cloud 
symbol of the Holy Spirit covers, overshadows Jesus. And the voice comes from heaven saying, This is my son with whom I am well pleased. The Holy Trinity is revealed on Mount Tabor, to, uh, Mount Tabor too. And then there is something that we need to remember. In the Old Testament, God the Father is revealed. And Father says, I will send my word who will come and speak to you. And there is a prophecy about the Messiah, the word of God that becomes human being and come and speak to us. There is a prophecy about the Messiah, the word of God, that is Jesus Christ himself, who is going to come as human being and then speak to us. It is already prophesied by God the Father in the Old Testament, all throughout the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, Jesus came. The word of God became flesh and Jesus came. And then Jesus said, the mystery is not over. When I leave, I will send the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. When the paraclete comes, he will help you. He will reveal. He will reveal all the secrets. All what I have preached to you. He will reveal to you and remind you. And then after the death and resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost. On Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, the mystery is revealed to an extent what we can understand that there is a Holy Trinity. That is how we all believe from there, we started believing in the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity aspect was not revealed in the Old Testament, but it was revealed later, that is in the New Testament after Pentecost. Pentecost is the day Holy Spirit is revealed, the divinity of the Holy Spirit is revealed to us. So this is a small, small, slowly, slowly revealing the truths. It's a long revelation though. If you take the whole Bible, then one revelation, the mystery of the Holy Trinity. If you take Old Testament, you only get the Father. If you take the New Testament Gospels, you will only get the Son. And if you take the Acts of the Apostles and Letters, then you will get Holy Spirit. And all together, we get the Holy Trinity. Then I used to wonder, why did God reveal little bit, little bit, little bit, like, you know, uh, as if uh, he is just uh, re uh, so stingy in giving the re revelations of mystery. Why is he doing that? Why can't he reveal in the beginning itself that I am the Father and I am the Son and the Holy Spirit. We are Holy Trinity but one God. He could have revealed in the beginning itself. Just the picture should be clean, clear at the beginning. So that we all understand, okay, this is exactly what it is. We don't need to interpret it every time. Why God is revealing little bit, little bit in the history of humanity for the last, for the almost, the whole Bible is a history of almost three, four thousands of years. So the Old Testament is about two thousand years before Jesus Christ. New, uh, New Testament is of course uh, around hundred and three hundred years of history. So almost two hundred, uh, two thousand five. 400 or 500 years of history is written in this Bible. And one book, which the first book, part of the Bible was written by Moses, which was not read by other prophets. And the other prophets, they wrote some books which are not re read by the later prophets. So these are different timings. In the different timings, different prophets wrote it. And there were not many copies of the Bible available. Only one copy was available in those days. The one who wrote it. Hardly somebody has copied it. Because there was no uh, printing machine. Nothing of those sort. Therefore, whenever they wrote these books. They had no clue about the other books. They wrote it what they experienced. The other person wrote it what he experienced. The next person wrote what he experienced. And now the church has put it together. And gave it to us as the Bible. The biggest secret is all these books are connected. All these books are connected mysteriously. And one is completed in the another. Another is completed in the another. Likewise is so complementing to each other. And the whole faith, Catholic Church, the Christian faith has come together. So that itself is a mystery. So I used to wonder why did God do this? Why should God select such kinds of mysterious ways of revealing the mystery? Then, and I, this used to be there in my unconscious mind. I always think about it. But one day, 
I happened to see a YouTube video that was like this. In somewhere, I don't remember exactly the place and all the details, but I know what exactly was the video that I saw. In one picnic spot where thousands of people visit, there in a in a open field, there are so many hundreds of poles. You know, a small pillars like like thing, maybe so big and is so high. Hundreds of pillars close by. People can walk in in between these pillars, and huge pillars and painted in different uh, modern art on these pillars, and hundreds of it in one area, a certain area. And when we are standing under the pillar, we don't understand why these pillars, what is speciality of these, and we can't even see. We don't find any meaning for it. So many hundreds, hundreds of pillars and huge one. and different paintings and there is no meaning for the painting just casual some colors are there in every pole but the mystery is if you watch these pillars from maybe 500 meters away from the spot then if you from one side if you look you can see the face of nelson mandela in that pole the face of nelson mandela is clear but if you stand under the poles one pole here another pole here another pole here you don't see anything but from far you see a beautiful picture of nelson mandela and then and hundreds of people visit this so then i remembered whoever may be the architect if he was just painting the a face of nelson mandela on a wall nobody will visit okay because there are so many pictures so many pictures of nelson mandela available everywhere so they don't need to come to see this picture because they can just download it in the uh, from the google and watch it so why do these people come and why this is something so special and something mysterious something beautiful everyone is praising that architect because this is something uh, you know when we stand there under the pole it is one pole another pole another pole but when you are standing from far it's a beautiful picture of nelson mandela therefore all glory and honor was given to the architect now my dear brothers and sisters why god did not reveal everything all the secrets in one book in one time then there is nothing mystery there is nothing glory nothing to glorify god anybody can if you are a very good novelist you can create a beautiful holy scripture for a religion if you are a very good novelist you can write down beautiful mysteries just go to a cave and sit there and then write down the beautiful mysteries of uh, you and you can start a religion or anything but only a god can just reveal in thousands of years of span without Uh, you know the uh, the others without we were meeting together a hidden hand of god a revelation from heaven revealing to the different people in different places in different timings without even meeting them together and giving the secret which is well connected that is called the mystery and that is called the mighty intervention of god praise the lord thank you jesus praise you jesus and this is something that we need to remember that is why we call the holy bible is sacred bible holy bible is a revelation of god himself and holy bible has got all the answers for every question that we have in our mind so the other day when i was just going through the bible passages i was just checking if the holy trinity is a mystery this mystery should be there somewhere in the old testament secretly revealed and it should be evident there and then i opened the bible and the first passage that i got was this and i was just curious to just re- read it because the first line attracted me because that is something connected to the holy trinity and as i was going on reading it the mystery was revealed and made it a bigger mystery let's read genesis chapter 18 was one on words genesis chapter 18 was one on words we read like this This is Genesis chapter 18 verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham. No, it is very clearly said, the Lord appeared to Abraham. 
we don't know how god ap appeared to abraham you know it's not an angel it is not anyone else it is the lord appeared to abraham by the ox of mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day every detail is given very extreme weather strong heat and then the lord the only god appeared to abraham by the ox of mamre is a tree as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day he was just waiting there sitting there and the lord appeared now remember word of god says the lord lord means l o r d capital red letter because that is how jewish people they don't announce or pronounce the name of yahweh instead of yahweh they write, normally write y h w h they don't pronounce the whole name of god yahweh the lord means yahweh so the lord appeared to abraham god the almighty father appeared to abraham appeared came apparition now how was that let's read verse 3 he looked up and saw three men standing near him bible says he didn't bible doesn't say three lords came bible only said the lord came appeared to him and how did he appear three men standing near him when he saw them he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground worshiping three men why three it should be one or maybe two one is main god the other one is assistant but here three men came in front of god and the bible says the lord appeared he didn't say, bible doesn't say the lord appeared let's continue reading verse 3 he said my lord why did why did abraham call my lord why didn't say my lords why didn't say uh, uh, you know in addressing three people why did he address only to one person as if these three people are one this all mystery that's why i said the mystery was revealed in this passage and it made bigger mystery my lord if i find favor with you do not pass by your servant was for continue let a little let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree was five let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant so they said do as you have said you know it is not just one person says they all of them together said do as you have said again another mystery one sentence everyone said the same sentence verse 5 verse 6 and abraham hastened into the tent to sarah and said make ready quickly three measures of choice flour knead it and make cakes again three there as three people verse 7 Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf and tender and good and gave it to the servant and who hastened to prepare it was eight then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree while they ate so we can see three people again mentioned was nine they said to him it is not you know they said to him they spoke together where is your wife sarah and he said there in the tent see this is something very important bible doesn't say one of them said here it is said one they said but one sentence but another occasion it is also says one of them said so that means most of which they spoke they have unity oneness but at the same time individual identity too this is a secret this is a mystery they said to him where is your wife sara and he said there in the tent was 10 then one said see first sentence they all said together one why do they speak all together with one sentence now one one said i will surely return to you in due season and your wife sara shall have a son and sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him some theologians say it must be the holy spirit who spoke 
because when holy spirit came upon mother mary she gave birth to a baby when holy spirit came upon sarah and and you know by the power supernatural intervention of god through the husband wife relationship of abraham and sarah she also gave birth to a child and sarah was listening at the end tent entrance behind him was 11 now abraham and sarah were old advanced in age it had ceased to be with sarah after the manner of women was 12 let's continue reading and so sarah laughed to herself saying after i have grown old my husband is old shall i have pleasure was 12 13 the lord said to abraham we don't know who is this there are three people we don't know who said now says the lord said to abraham why did sarah laugh and say shall i indeed bear a child now that i am old we don't see okay one said the first one said or second one said or third one said here it said the lord but there are three people so it's a mystery when we read this passage verse 14 is not anything too wonderful for the lord at the set time i will return to you you know here they said the lord but we don't know how many of the, i mean who said but we know there are three people and they address themselves saying i will return to you in due season and sarah shall have a son verse 15 but sarah denied saying i did not laugh for she was afraid he said oh yes you did laugh and again he but we don't know who verse 16 continue reading then the men set out from there and they looked towards Sodom and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. Verse 17. The Lord said, again we don't know who said, but there are three people. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19. No, for I have chosen him that he may charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Verse 20. Then the Lord said, My dear brothers and sisters, this is a you know, discussion that was going on between the Holy Trinity that was mentioned here. But they, didn't, they don't need to speak out because what the mind of the mind of the father is understood by the mind of the son and mind of the father and son is understood by the holy spirit and it is just revealed through the bible and now the whole three people are considered as the lord and they, the lord said how great is the outcry against sodom and gomorrah and how very grave they sin so if you continue reading this mystery of the holy trinity is brilliantly explained in this whole passage and at the end of all these you will have lots of confusion and because it's a mystery and it's a clear sign this is a real revelation of the mystery praise the lord so my dear brothers and sisters therefore remember this is very important for us and also my dear brothers and sisters we all we all read in the old testament uh, that whenever god the father came the cloud used to cover the whole mountain we read like this in the word of god uh, sorry the catechism of the catholic church 697 697 we read like this cloud and light these two images occur together in the manifestations of the holy spirit in the theophanies of old testament the cloud and now obscure, now luminous, reveals the living and saving God. While veiling the transcendence of his glory. With Moses on Mount Sinai at the tent of meeting. And during the wandering in the desert. And with Solomon at the dedication of the temple in the Holy Spirit. Christ fulfills these figures. The Spirit comes upon the Virgin Mary and overshadows her. So that she might conceive and give birth to Jesus. 
on the mountain of transfiguration the spirit in the cloud came and overshadowed jesus moses and elijah peter and james and john and a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my son my chosen listen to him finally the cloud took jesus out of the sight of the disciples on the day of his ascension and will reveal him as a son of man in glory on the day of his final coming he will come on the cloud so cloud is a symbol of the holy spirit and remember my dear brothers and sisters father is revealed in the old testament son is revealed in the new testament and in the future church, church the holy spirit is revealed the holy spirit is the one who is guiding the early church in the acts of the apostle you can see the holy spirit is taking one person to another i mean one place to another leading them go here go there speak like this be do this all these things are guided by the holy spirit in the old testament and remember the new testament is the new exodus and the holy spirit is the one who is guiding us in the old testament in the first exodus the e egypt from egypt israelites came out of egypt to the promised land in the first exodus the daytime cloud nighttime the fire was guiding them leading them in fact it was the holy spirit who was leading the first exodus and now in the new testament in the new second exodus the holy spirit is leading the whole christians into the final promised land that is heaven so there are so many secrets of the holy trinity revealed to us in the bible only if you understand the whole bible we will understand little bit of mystery but should be the rest will be should be mystery because that's a mystery let's read catechism of the catholic church 237 catechism of the catholic church 237 we read like this the word of uh, the catechism of the catholic church that was in the first uh, first we read 300 234 and then now let's read 237 if we are not getting it at least you read catechism of the catholic church 707 707 let's read this catechism of the catholic church theophanies manifestations of god light up the way of the promise because in the old testament we saw the theophany what is theophany means theophany means the apparitions of god in the old testament one of which we just read three people came in front of abraham they spoke together they were addressed as the lord though they were three but they were addressed as the lord when they spoke they spoke together one message so there are the these are called theophanies another theophany is god comes down on mount sinai the cloud covers the whole mount sinai from mount sinai god speak like thunder the voice of the thunder so these are called theophanies manifestations of god now catechism of the catholic church 707 says theophanies light up the way of the promise from the patriarchs patriarchs means abraham isaac jacob and to the moses and from joshua to the visions that inaugurated the missions of the great prophets christian tradition has always recognized that god's word allowed himself to be seen and heard in these theophanies what does it mean in the old testament we all heard the word of god because we heard the word was like a mighty thunder and in the new testament this word became flesh and that is jesus so christian tradition has always recognized that god's word allowed himself to be seen and heard in these theophanies in which the cloud of the holy spirit both revealed him and concealed him in his shadow so my dear brothers and sisters so i understand at the end of this preaching that you may not have understood anything if you did not understand i am happy that i could speak successfully about holy trinity my dear brothers and sisters as we are celebrating the feast of most holy trinity let us thank the lord for this holy trinity we have a god the father who is watching from above and we have a god who is walking with us jesus christ and we have a god who dwells inside of us 
that is holy spirit we are perfectly covered in and out therefore there is no other god who can claim this this perfect covering and protection and he is in and and through us working through us so let us thank the lord for this gift of most holy trinity which is a mystery and thank the lord for this mystery as we celebrate this feast of most holy trinity